Hi guys and welcome to my new video. Today I want to talk about tube connectors and demonstrate how you can design the perfect connector. You might use such connectors for connecting pipes or as corner pieces in polyhedral assemblies, like the one I'm showing on screen right now. This example is a dodecahedron, which would be assembled from 30 rods and 20 corner pieces. This connector style is in my opinion the perfectly clean design, but it requires some groundwork. So please bear with me for just a minute. I want to provide you with some intuition in a 2D sketch before making use of the 3D sketching abilities of Autodesk Fusion to design the actual connector. When we want to have a round connection in a 2D sketch, we usually just use the fillet feature and specify the radius. This creates an arc and tangent constraints to connect the lines. The defining property of this arc is that all the points share the same distance to its center. Hence, these lines I just sketched connecting the endpoints of the arc to its center must be perpendicular to the initial lines. From this property, we can derive an alternative method of creating the same fillet. I start with two lines perpendicular to the initial lines. If these lines should be radii of the fillet, they must be of equal length, so I add an equal constraint. Then I add a dimension and specify the radius of the fillet I want to create. Then I draw the circle and trim everything. As so often, Fusion loses some constraints while trimming and I recreate them to reconstrain everything properly. This process is of course way too laborious to be used for a 2D filleting problem. But as there is no fillet feature to smoothly connect three lines in 3D space, we can use a 3D generalization of what I just showed to create something much like a fillet. So without any further ado, Let's start with the 3D connector. I start with the sketch on the top plane, but make it a 3D sketch, so the reference plane does not really matter. I sketch the two center lines of length 100 mm, but this length will not be critical for the end result. I add another dimension for the angle between the lines. Then I add a construction line, which will represent the projection of the third center line. I add a dimension to set the angle. I want the line to be centered between the two other lines, so I use a formula here. Instead of entering a value, I just click the pre-existing angular dimension and type Y2. Up until now, I have effectively just created a 2D sketch. Now I rotate the sketch and continue in the third dimension. From the end point of the construction line, I add another vertical construction line. Then I connect its endpoint to the origin with a sketch line, which will determine the third tube's center line. I add dimensions to constrain the length of this line and to define its angle. Some lines are still blue, so they are not fully constrained. I try and drag the endpoints to find out what constraints are missing. Two points of the initial planar sketch had to be constrained to coincide with the top plane. Unfortunately, the lines still are blue but as I cannot drag any points, I am confident that everything is fine. Now that we have defined the center lines of the tubes, I start constructing the fillet part. What was a circle in the 2D sketch will be a sphere in 3D space. So now I want to construct the centroid of this sphere. As before, this centroid will be defined by radial lines connecting it to the center lines I've just sketched. I start by sketching three arbitrary lines connecting the center lines to a common point. Next, I make sure that there is a perpendicular constraint between every line and the corresponding center line. I can still move the point, which will be the sphere's centroid, freely in space. Next, I add two equal constraints, so all three radial lines must be of equal length. Now the centroid can only be moved along one axis. What is left to do is to set the radius of the sphere I'm going for. I choose 50 mm. Some lines are still blue, but this seems to be a glitch in Fusion's sketch solver. Let's have a quick look at the sketch from the top and from the side. Don't worry, the potentially confusing part is finished now. If you're still with me, feel free to like and subscribe and let me know about your design challenges in the comments. I finish the sketch and create the actual sphere I've been talking about. For that I need a sketching plane. I choose plane from two edges from the construct menu. 
Then I select two of the three radial lines to define the plane and create the sketch on it. I project one of these radial lines I've just used to create the plane as construction line. Then I sketch a circle using this line as radius. You can see that also the endpoint of the second line lies on the circle. I sketch an axis through the circle and make it coincide with the centroid before trimming the circle. Then I finish my sketch and switch to the surface tab. I choose Revolve to create the sphere from the half circle. As we can see, this sphere exactly touches the three center lines I started off with, which is just what I was aiming for. Now we have to trim the sphere to our needs. For that I create the plane through two edges again, only this time I choose two of the center lines. Then I select split body and use this plane to split the sphere before removing the part that is outside of this corner area. I hide the plane and do the same thing two more times for the other two combinations of center lines. So create plane, split body, remove body, hide plane and one more time Create plane, split body, remove body, and I forgot about the hide plane this time. The remainder of the sphere is a single body, but effectively consists of two parts. The only thing we will actually need is this small triangular face. To isolate it, I unstitch the body. Then I can remove the part I do not need. Let's have a closer look at this resulting face. It's a spherical face that smoothly connects to all three center lines, so I would say it's a perfect 3D generalization of a 2D fillet. It may not look like it, but we are practically done. If you're still with me, consider supporting me details in the description. Now let's hide the sketch and quickly construct our actual connector. From the solid tab I choose thicken. I choose symmetric and set the thickness to half the diameter of the tubes I want to connect. Then I use the pipe feature to do the rounded parts. Here I have to uncheck chain selection to do one pipe for each edge of the triangular face. I choose join to have one resulting solid body and the enter double the value I've just used in thicken as section size. Let's do the second edge. And for the third edge I have to temporarily hide the body for easier selection of the edge. The basic shape of the connector is finished and now I want to extrude the interfaces a little further. Then I make the whole thing hollow using the shell feature. Here, of course, I have to select all three interfaces. I finished my connector and do a section analysis to really savor the smoothness of my design. The connector I've just designed is part of this pyramid-like structure, but can be easily adapted to build the initially shown dodecahedron. I hope you're enjoying this result as much as I am, and found this helpful. Feel free to share any feedback in the comments. Have a great time designing and prototyping.